Okay, so I've, uh, I've been working for just about two years now on Menom Cave. It's situated in the Western Galilee region of northern Israel. And um, the sediments that have been found inside uh, are starting to reveal clues about human evolution. So, I'm sure you've all seen this diagram before. We start off uh, with Homo habilis there in Africa, and we start um, evolving you know, through Darwinian uh, processes. And what we're really interested in at the Cave is at the very top there, just under Africa and Europe, around the Neanderthal days. But at Manok Cave, we're interested in the development of modern humans. And now, there are actually two waves of modern humans. We're looking at the second wave, which I think we get to later. Oh, and here's a picture of our ancestors. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, here's a diagram of Africa. And you can see Manok Cave there on the right-hand side. Um, these arrows indicate the theory of uh, the out-of-Africa hypothesis of human evolution. And under this theory, there are more or less four significant waves of people leaving Africa. Um, the third wave was modern humans, about 100,000 years ago. And the fourth wave was super modern humans. So the difference between Homo sapiens and Homo sapiens sapiens. Next slide. Um, so here are some old human fossils that have been found around the area. Um, that school in Kwazep are the Homo sapiens. So they're uh, wave three, 100,000 year old fossils that look like us, but they're not quite us. This is us. This was found in Manak Cave. It's just a calvaria, but they've done an analysis and it is uh, anatomically modern human and it's dated to 55,000 years ago. And now that is within the time frame of Homo sapiens sapiens. So Mount Cave, uh, it's important. I mean, it has the potential to rewrite human evolutionary history. It's published in Nature. And in the cave, we just found this one calvaria, but that doesn't really tell us much. And so what I do is geoarchaeology. I look at the dirt. Um, and what we're really interested in is this transition from middle Paleolithic technology, upper Paleolithic technology. And that might not mean anything to you now, but hopefully by the end it'll mean a lot. Uh, so this is inside the cave. It's, um, uh, it's sloped about 20 degrees down. And the area I'm working on, area E, is at the very top of the slope. And we think, because it looks like a talus flow, that the old entrance to the cave was in my area. Um, and this cave was sealed 30,000 years ago, meaning that everything that happens for history until that point has been sealed off. So it's like a photograph. You can analyze the past with, uh, with relative certainty it has been altered. And now this is the uh, mode 4, or this is um, Homo sapiens sapien technology. It's called mode 4, and its signatures are a blade technology and the adoption of new techniques of making tools, such as using bone instead of just rocks. And so what do we find on the cave? Well, we find flakes, and we find bone tools. This is a very promising uh, uh, evidence uh, from the archaeological record. But we want to know more. The next slide. Uh, another picture of the cave. When people first entered, they thought it looked pretty, so they thought, hey, maybe uh, the people here were doing ritual behaviors. But no evidence has come up from that. Um, I'm not in this photo, don't try to look for me too hard. But this is what we do, we excavate. And the next photo. And sometimes we find things that spark a lot of interest. This is, well, does anyone know what this is? Yes? Old oldest fireplace. It is a fireplace. Not the world's oldest, that might be in South Africa. But it is a hearth feature. So this tells us that people came in this cave, modern people, and they sat down and they built a fire. Well, we think they built a fire. They could have brought it in from outside, but due to the nature of the hearth and the number of hearths present in this area, we're pretty sure they have control over fire. And now what I do is, <coughs> John's we, uh, we take blocks of sediment out, cast them in resin, cut them really thin, glue them to a slide, and look at them under the microscope. And this enables us to look at really small things. <laughs> it's very significant because if you take a, if you take a rock and smash it and mix it in the dirt, you won't find much even if you sip it. 
But, uh, next slide. If you look closely under the microscope, under plane polarized and cross polarized light, things start to appear. You start seeing Cancellus bone in the upper left corner. You can start seeing shell. You start seeing limestone that's been altered due to weather. On uh, that bottom, uh, bottom right side, 20x, that's heated bone. And uh, as Jan said, you can actually zap it with another machine. Uh, because in geoarchaeology we're very multidisciplinary. You can't just look at an section and um, understand the site. You need to use other techniques. And so you can figure out how hot the bone is heated. And this is what I'm looking at to try and understand human behavior. Next slide. And so this is uh, one of the methods I use. I just scan the whole slide. Um, for my project last year I did uh, six. Now I'm doing another 14. and I, or so ago, and I get a lot of data. So here I was just looking at flint. I want to see, this is uh, from a control column, so I want to see if there's any difference in flint abundance um, going down the stratigraphic sequence. And then this would be compared to, uh, to features, like hearth features or napping features. So you can say, yes, uh, we have significantly more of a certain material. And um, uh, so this information doesn't tell you much, it has to be compared with other slides. And another thing I've been looking at is secondary calcium carbonate. And this is for environmental reconstruction. Because we know the process of calcium dissolution from bone and from limestone. This is a limestone cave. And so by looking at secondary calcium carbonate in the form of nodules or clay coatings, we can begin to understand if, uh, if it's a very acidic environment or, what they, um, or how the environment changed through the stratigraphic layers which can tell us if we should be looking for bone or if we can expect all bone to be dissolved. Next slide. And this is what I look like in the lab most of the time. <laughs> because, <laughs> because at the end of the analysis, you have all this information and all the tables from the slides, and you're left thinking, what does it mean? Because here we are trying to understand the human evolution, and we have a cave. It's been sealed 30,000 years ago. What were people doing then? We know they made a fire. Okay. We find tools. Okay. There was one calvaria. But were they living in the cave? Was it sustainable? Were they exploring the cave? Were they only in that upper region? Well, I, I can't really answer any of these questions right now. We're still doing the analysis. I've only looked at um, one year's worth of excavations. But uh, so far, I think we're well on our way, and hopefully I'll be able to continue this project in the future. But that's what I have for now. Thank you.